Hello, welcome to St John's Wellcliffe for our Facebook and YouTube service on this fifth Sunday of Lent, Passion Sunday. And our preacher today is the Reverend Rob Tugwell, the curate for the Whitstable Team Ministry. It's great to welcome Rob to take to preach for us today. And we sing our opening hymn. And we have our confession. We come to God seeking his forgiveness afresh. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people forgive our silence christ have mercy christ have mercy christ came in love to a world of suffering forgive our self-centeredness lord have mercy lord have mercy May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Passion Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have our Bible reading for today. The reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning at verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, 
Sir, we would we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Rob is going to preach for us. Good morning everyone and it's a great pleasure to share this message, this reflection with you this morning. First of all a question for us to think about. I wonder what you hold on tightly to. If we take it in a literal sense, maybe you can think back to a time that you've held a child's hand. Sometimes you'll be holding a child's hand knowing that they're quite placid and quite reliable and, you know, they'd walk along quite happily with you and uh, you don't need to hold too tightly. But then at other times you might be holding a hand of a child who's a bit of a darter a child who might see something which really appeals to them, something that takes their fancy, and as soon as they've seen such a thing, they'll be flying off towards it. And you know that you have to hold their hand a bit more tightly in order to keep them safe. If we think about this from a metaphorical side, from a metaphorical angle, uh, I wonder if there's something, or has ever been something that you've held on a bit tightly to, maybe a bit too tightly, At this point, my mind goes to the Lord of the Rings book and the character of Gollum and his ring. I'm reminded of how his grip on it became an obsession and dominated his life. It's not a bad image for us to take into our reflection today. It's not a bad image for us to take, not a bad thing for us to take into our reflecting over the days ahead. What do we hold on to? What is our precious and should we, should we be holding on to it quite so tightly? Because in the midst of what Jesus is saying here in our passage is that he's challenging us regarding what we hold on to most tightly. What Jesus is going to model in his life and what we'll see in the next uh, few chapters of John's Gospel is also what he's calling each of his followers to do in their own lives. And if he's calling his followers to do it then, he's also calling us to do it now. And of course, back then they couldn't see it yet. None of it really made sense. A suffering Messiah wasn't part of their plan at all. And uh, it was only after all of this had played out that the disciples could piece it all together, like the pieces of a jigsaw and see what was really going on. And there's some interesting elements to this passage that are worth picking out. In the Gospel so far, Jesus had been talking about the fact that his time had not yet come. But now, in our passage today, we see him declaring that his time had arrived. Some people connect this to the fact that in our passage, Gentiles, Greeks, are seeking to meet Jesus. They come to uh, to the disciples asking where Jesus was. This indicates that Jesus' mission and his work was moving beyond 
God's chosen people, the Israelites. And it indicates how after his death, Jesus' work and uh, his message would continue to spread around the world. And then also equally fascinating is Jesus' reaction to understanding that his time had now come. After using this analogy of a seed falling and dying in order to produce its fruit, Jesus expresses his emotion. And is he excited by the prospect? Is he joyful about being able to move forwards in his mission? No. The first thing we read is that his soul is troubled. Here again, we're invited to reflect on Jesus as fully human, as well as fully God. Jesus knows all that is ahead of him. He alludes to it at the end of our passage, that he'll be lifted up. Lifted up, of course, on the cross, not held high in adoration. And this pain, along with the rejection, along with being separated from God, deeply troubles him, as of course it would. This is a great passage and a step forward in Jesus' ministry as he recognises that his time to be glorified has come at last. It was time to move on to the next phase of his great plan, the next phase of his mission. But also we treasure the fact that there's such honesty and that Jesus expresses his anxiety about what is ahead. It's to our benefit that these gospel accounts aren't sugar-coated or rose-tinted. They're real and with real emotions. And so Jesus is going to fall like a seed, like a single grain. But in doing so, he is going to produce the ultimate fruit. This will be witnessed over the chapters ahead. And as we journey towards Easter, we'll see it all playing out. But as he turns his face towards this next phase of ministry in our passage today, so he calls his people to walk the same path. And so alongside us exploring this passage and wondering at the journey of Jesus, we place ourselves within this challenge too. And we return to our original question. In what way may we need to fall as a single grain so that God can bear much fruit in our lives? Are there ways which we are saying no to God? Are there risks we just feel are too big to take in our priorities, in our decision making, in the position do we give faith in our lives? Do we find ourselves just holding back a bit or maybe a lot? Is it time? Is it money? Is it security? What is it that we're holding on to just too tightly? Part of holding the Christian faith is about loss. It's about being willing not to be in the driving seat of our lives. It's about a willingness to live sacrificially. It's about being willing to look beyond ourselves more often than we might otherwise do. To consider others more than we might otherwise do. To go without a bit sometimes. But in doing so for God and for being obedient to what he's calling us to do, so we mirror something of the life of Christ, who walked with troubled heart towards what God had called him to do. And in doing so, he changed the world forever. It's likely that God won't ask us to lay down our lives literally, but for every one of us, there are things we can let go of as we follow God's call. And the wonder is that whatever we offer, whatever we sacrifice, whatever we lay down, God can work miracles with, to the blessing of individuals, our community, the church and the world. Amen.
Thank you, Rob, for that sermon. We really appreciate it. And now, the intercessions. Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. As we look at this picture of Jesus carrying the cross, we reflect that we are not far from Holy Week when we remember Jesus carrying the cross on Good Friday. On that day, we will gather online with our sisters and brothers in Christ across Whitstable for our walk of witness virtually. And so as we come to pray, we pray for the church throughout Whitstable as we prepare for Holy Week, as we prepare to celebrate Easter, but before that to walk the way of the cross through the reflective and penitential days that lead up to Easter. Help us, Lord, to carry our cross, whatever that cross may be. Maybe we have somebody in our family who is ill. Maybe we have someone we have a difficult relationship with. Maybe we have difficult financial problems, or different difficult work problems. We are all called to carry our cross of struggle. Sometimes it can be a health problem. That is often the way we perceive the carrying of the cross. So help us to carry those difficulties with grace. But carrying the cross doesn't just mean health difficulties or relationship difficulties. We also carry the cross because we carry the need to serve God before ourselves. The carrying of the cross represents a life of self-giving, of offering ourselves afresh to the Holy Spirit. And so we pray, Lord, that we might carry our cross in the sense that we put others first, that we put you first, that we deny ourselves, take up the cross and follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Next Sunday, we'll be hearing about the changing lives conversations that are happening in the diocese and beyond. We give thanks for this initiative and we pray for our Palm Sunday online service as we launch these ideas into the parish. Bless the work of the changing lives team in the diocese. And bless our ability to reflect and articulate our faith and our experience of Christ, God and spiritual experiences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray specifically for St John's. We pray for the streaming services which will now begin on Good Friday. May they go technically well and may they reach out to a wider diaspora of people than the pre-recorded services have done may they spread your good news of joy and love to our community and we pray for those who will be attending our services from palm sunday onwards both in the church and the church center that will be kept safe we will socially distance and yet we will be able to meet with you with our brothers and sisters near us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are sick and ill from our community. And we also remember those who have sadly died, remembering the life of Jack Brent, commending him to your unfailing love and care. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And now a moment of silence for your own prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now a reminder of the need for giving if you are able to help support St John's. Each service when we normally meet in church we normally have a collection but of course we're not able to do that at the moment so we decided at a recent meeting that on our videos we would mention that we you can still give to St John's via various online ways or practical ways during the COVID-19 epidemic. The easiest way is to go on to our church website and this is a photo of our giving page on our church website which has various ways of giving described on it. Please do visit this website. If for any reason you're unable to access our website please contact us through the phone numbers that are available through our printed media and we will explain to you ways in which you can give. We do thank you for your continuing generosity to St John's at this challenging time for us all and your gifts are gratefully received. I'd like to thank all of you who do give to St John's a reminder that next Sunday is our Palm Sunday service and the service will be a team service which will be available on YouTube and Facebook. It will be led by various people from the team and it will be looking at the Changing Lives project which the Diocese of Canterbury has launched some time ago which is Gathering Steam and you can find out all about it by watching our service next Sunday. We will be streaming that on Facebook and YouTube at 10 o'clock. We sing our final hymn.
peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and for evermore amen go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ amen Lord, we come to your cross.